Hello. My name is Purnima Kumar, and I lead a double life. By day, I'm a periodontist, and I treat people with periodontitis or gum disease as it's popularly seen. So do me a favor. Look to your right and look to your left. If your dentist told you that you don't have gum disease, odds are one of your neighbors does. This disease affects at least 60% of adults over 40 years of age. And it's caused by pathogens that colonize our mouths. And so, by night, I'm a microbial ecologist, and I study why these bacteria become pathogens and how we can prevent pathogen colonization and so put myself out of my day job. <laughs> Every day in my practice, I see people like this. You're looking at two men with gum disease, both of whom look like they had never picked up a toothbrush for 20 years. Their gums are swollen and bleeding, and when we look at their x-rays, we see that they've lost at least half the bone that anchors their tooth to their jaw. Not a lot of difference between these two, you would say, except one is 35 and the other is 62. And every day I ask myself, why does someone so young have such severe disease? And in most cases, the answer is that my 35-year-old patient is a smoker. Smoking not only causes severe gum disease, it also causes aggressive disease, which means that young people have severe disease, which causes them to lose teeth very quickly. Not just that, this gum disease is also a risk factor for heart disease in cases of women to have low birth weight babies, to have preterm deliveries, to have strokes. So it's not just your mouth. The rest of your body is connected. The mouth is part of this body, and the rest of your body gets affected by this too. The traditional paradigm is that smoking affects the immune cells within our mucosal linings, and that it decreases the blood supply to our skin. And in doing this, it compromises barrier function. Now, when we think of barriers, we think of our visible barriers, our skin, and the mucosal membranes that line our mouth, nose, throat, lung, gut, vagina, kidneys, all of this. But we have an invisible barrier that covers all of these surfaces. What I'm showing you here is a picture of a tooth in a mouth. The white is a tooth, so it's in a mouth. But this could be applied to any surface in your body. And you have good bacteria, the blue and the green ones that I'm showing you here, that colonize us within hours of birth. And these good bacteria form these beautiful mats called biofilms. And they have at least two very important functions. These good bacteria, by forming these mats, prevent these orange pathogens from colonizing. And they teach your purple immune cells that will show up in a second right there to recognize these orange pathogens as foes and to kill them. And so these good bacteria are your first personal trainers. So, how can something so small make a difference in your life, you can ask. But for every skin cell you have, you have a hundred bacteria living on them. And when you're outnumbered a hundred to one, something has to make an effect on you, right? So, these bacteria, when these bacterial communities go rogue, they not only cause gum disease, they also cause cavities and cancer. And so, an important part is to understand what these bacteria are, who is good, and who is bad. T traditionally, people have used culturing to, you know, recognize good and bad bacteria. But in our lab, we do things a little differently. We use next generation sequencing methods, cloud computing to analyze the big data that comes out of these, these next generation sequencing. When we sequence DNA, it tells us what bacteria are good and bad. When we sequence RNA, it tells us what do they do when you smoke or eat a cookie or drink Coke, 
or even kiss. And what we found over 10 years is that the good bacteria that form protective barriers are lost in smokers, leaving the field wide open for these orange pathogens to come in and colonize. Your body responds by it's, you know, calling out the immune army that creates this huge inflammatory response that results in tissue destruction. And this is not just the mouth, it happens in every part of your body. So what we see in the mouth, we can extend to your lung, to your kidney, to your spleen, organs that you don't see at all, which is using the mouth as a model for what we're studying here. The good news is, these good bacteria return when you quit smoking. Here are two subjects who are smokers. They have very few good bacteria, as you can see by those few green lines that they have there. Subject B quit smoking, and in a year, you can see that he gets a whole lot of these good bacteria coming back. Subject A stayed smoking for 12 months, and he has as few good bacteria after 12 months as he did when he started. So the answer is simple, quit smoking, right? Well, well, this is one thing that is easier said than done. When I did this study, and I had to get my patients to quit smoking. I told them, listen, if, if Chantix doesn't work, if Nicorette doesn't work, why don't you try this new thing called e-cigarettes? Everyone tells you they're safe. You know, they work. Because I, like everyone else, bought into this campaign that was happening. And then I dug a little deeper. I literally just scratched below the surface. And I found that there was no evidence, absolutely no evidence to back these claims. And so I decided to study it. So I went home and I told my 20-year-old twins, I said, hey, I'm doing this study on e-cigarettes. If you have anyone, if you know anyone who smokes e-cigarettes, send them my way. I'll pay them for doing my study. Guess what? 75% of subjects in my study came from my daughter's friend's circle. Some of these children I had driven to soccer practice when we were growing up. <laughs> And that is because 18 to 24 year olds are our biggest consumers of e-cigarettes. And what our research showed us is that e-cigarettes take your good bacterial barrier and makes it virulent. What I'm showing you here is called a triplot. You can see the smoker at the top of the apex, you can see the never smokers and e-cigarette users. These are bacterial genes that make your immune system go nuts. And you can see that all of these genes are sequestered in the e-cigarette users. The bacteria that you see in e-cigarette users are highly resistant to antibiotics. They have a lot of stress compounds that they throw out. I could go on with this list, but the bottom line is, e-cigarettes take your good bacterial barriers that should protect you and make them virulent. So why am I telling you this? Why do these pathogens love these e-cigarettes? An e-cigarette is deceptively simple. It is a battery-operated device that takes a cartridge that contains nicotine, vapor, and flavor, and creates this beautiful vapor cloud that makes everyone look cool. The vapor cloud is made up of propylene glycol and glycerine. And our studies have shown us that these big carbon molecule, vapor is to bacteria, what a hamburger is to humans. So you have to ask, a calorie conscious 20 year old is feeding hamburger to their bacteria. Is that, does it even make sense? But that's what we're facing today. The reason I'm talking about this today is because not so long ago, in many people's living memory, tobacco was considered a magic herb. When the European explorers took it from America back to Europe, it helped to cure migraine, it helped to cure diarrhea, it helped to cure dysentery. This is in the time of the plague when nothing else was available. Catherine de Medici actually paid for a voyage to people to come back to the USA to bring her some more of this tobacco. There was a whole generation that thought it was safe. They thought it was cool. And this iconic picture defines this generation. We are in that same place now. It took 200 years before people realized that tobacco can cause 
cancer, heart disease, and very recently, about 25 years ago, we found out that it caused gum disease. We are in the same place with electronic cigarettes. We are in a situation where e-cigarettes are the next new, cool, safe thing. And we're beginning to scratch the surface. And just by scratching the surface, we have not done any in-depth studies. This is the first study that has ever been done. Just in that, we are able to see that e-cigarettes are not the panacea that they, people claim that they are. So what can you do? Educate yourself. Go to real sites. Go to the CDC. Go to the FDA. Learn. Talk to people. If you see someone, say something. And most importantly, be a discerning consumer. Next time you see ads like this, remember, it is not a lucky strike. Pun intended. <laughs> Today, we have 18 to 24-year-olds who look as beautiful as this, gorgeous teeth. Someone paid for their orthodontics. They look fantastic. So let's act before they get to that point. Thank you for listening to me.